Greetings everyone and welcome back. This is the first video in a new series about making a web server that works on a microcontroller. Let's get started. Today I want to talk about Mongoose, and Mongoose is a web server and one that specifically has a very small code footprint. And if you've watched any of my videos in the past, you probably know where I'm going with this. We can get this web server to run on a microcontroller. So what exactly does a web server do? Maybe you just learned HTML and managed to whip up the best website ever created, like I did here. How would somebody be able to view this masterpiece? Anytime that you open up a web browser and try to visit a website, what you're actually doing is talking to the web server behind the scenes. In this example, the browser is asking the web server, hey, can you send me something called website.html? The web server then looks up that file and sends the HTML back to the browser. And then the browser is able to render that HTML, which makes it a lot more human friendly. Since the end goal is to run this web server on a microcontroller, we're probably not just going to host a normal website. It's more likely that we're going to display some sort of sensor reading. So one example is that we could maybe hook up a temperature sensor to the microcontroller and then display that value in our web page. We can do things that are a lot more complicated than this, but we'll get to that later. Behind the scenes, the way the browser asks for a website might look a little scary. If the browser wants a file called website.html, it actually sends a message that looks like this. Now don't worry, you don't have to read this. That's what the web server is for. And if you think this looks complicated, just look at what the server sends back. But luckily, our browser is able to read this, and it's able to render the website as we'd expect. When the browser is asking the server for something, we call this the HTTP request. And the data that the server sends back, we call the HTTP response. It's the web server's job to deal with all of this request and response information. And that lets us focus on the website itself. Well, all right, let's get this web server running. Now, I mentioned that this is a web server for microcontrollers. But if you have a background in microcontrollers, you know that some things can be overly complicated. So one thing that's incredibly convenient is that we can actually compile this on our computer and test everything out, and then move it to a microcontroller later. Since Mongoose was written for C slash C++, that means that we need a C and C++ compiler. And by that, I mean that we need a way to run GCC. If you've never seen this before, GCC means GNU Compiler Collection, which is really just a fancy way of saying it's a C compiler. You can tell if you already have GCC by opening up a terminal window and typing in GCC. If you get this error, it means that your computer doesn't know what GCC is. What you want to see is this error. This means that you don't know how to use GCC because you didn't specify all the arguments. But for real, if you want to see if GCC is installed and functional without getting an error message, you can always type in GCC dash dash version. If GCC is actually installed, you should see some version information instead of an error message. So how do we get GCC for Windows? And don't worry, if you're using Mac or Linux, I'll cover that too. If you don't already have a C compiler installed, there's a ton of options out there for you to use. My top three recommendations would be MinGW, Visual Studio, or Sigwin. Out of these three, MinGW is probably the fastest to get up and running. And it can be a little bit more beginner friendly. Next, we have Visual Studio, and while I don't personally use this, it's incredibly popular. I usually like to do my development from a command line, and Visual Studio is a full-fledged IDE. Lastly, there's Sigwin, which is what I personally have the most experience with. Sigwin is designed to give you that Linux feel on a Windows computer. If you're already comfortable with Linux, this might be the best option for you. But for this video, I'm going to stick with MinGW because it's very easy to get up and running. And if you didn't already have enough options, it turns out there's many ways that you can get the MinGW GCC compiler. And by that, I mean that you could download MinGW directly. And if you do that, you'll have to use this installation manager to pick all of the packages that you want. And I think this is a little too overwhelming for now, especially if you're not familiar with stuff like this. I prefer to just have a nice clean terminal window to work with. And what I'm using here is something called msys2, which is just a fancy way of getting you up and running with MinGW really quick. You can get msys2 from their website, msys2.org. It's really easy to get up and running by going to their homepage and clicking on this installation link. The msys2 installer is pretty straightforward and you can just install it with all of the default settings. And once the installation is done, you should have this nice clean terminal window. Now you might notice we still can't run GCC yet. Let's set that up now. Now I don't have all of this stuff memorized, so I'm going to go back to the msys2 website and just follow their installation guide. We've already installed the program, so I can skip over this stuff. And step 5 here says to run this command, pacman-syu. 
Pac-Man is a very aptly named program, which is the Package Manager. This is a program that will go out and download other programs for you. If you're following along on a different operating system like Linux or Mac, this part might differ for you a little bit. Different operating systems tend to use different package managers. In this example, we're using Pac-Man as our package manager, but you might be using something like apt or yum if you're on Linux, or something like brew or port if you're on a Mac. Now, while the actual commands to install GCC are different, the big picture is still the same. Next, we'll add the dash S, Y, and U flags like the installation guide says. And now we're just making sure that our Pac-Man is up to date. When asked if we want to proceed, we can type in Y and hit enter. Now our package manager is up to date, so let's download some programs. I'm going to type in clear to hide all of this stuff. I don't know if step six is a typo, but they're telling us to run the command that we just ran, so I'm going to skip this. Step seven is telling us exactly what we want to do, which is to install some tools like the mingw gcc to start compiling stuff. And the command to do that is right here. Normally, I like to break these commands down into more detail, but it's not very important here. The important thing to know is that we're basically using Pac-Man to install something called base-devel and also the mingw x86-64 toolchain. These two things are extremely common and give us a nice platform to start developing C programs with. Just as a reminder, this is what the command might look like if you're running on a different operating system or using a different package manager. And if we hit enter, we'll start downloading and installing everything. Here I'm being asked what I want to install, and it says that default is all, so I'm just going to hit enter to continue. And now I'm asked if I want to proceed with the installation, and the capital Y means that it's default for yes, so I'm just going to hit enter one more time. And now we wait. Hey, it looks like everything's done. So I'm gonna type in clear to hide all of this nonsense. Step eight in the instruction tells us to close this window and then run msys mingw 64 bit from the start menu. This just means that you don't wanna run the msys2 normal program. You actually wanna run the mingw x64 one. So now let's try out GCC and I'm gonna add the dash dash version flag. And it looks like everything's up and running. How exciting, now we have a C compiler and we can compile anything we want. How about a Mongoose web server? Let's meander on over to mongoose.ws in our web browser. To get started, we need to download the source code and there's this big blue button here that says view source code on GitHub. If we click that, it'll take us over to GitHub. Now the cool thing about GitHub is that we don't actually have to download the program Git in order to download the source code. Instead, we can just click on this little green button here that says code and then hit download zip. This will take all of the source code and give it to us in a zip file. If we open up this zip file, we'll see a single folder inside of it called Mongoose Master, and inside of that is all of the source code. For now, I'm just going to set this window aside. We're going to want to create a new folder for us to dump all of these files into so we can start compiling. I'm going to create a new folder in my documents, but you can really create this anywhere you want. I'm going to call this web server. Now I'm just going to open up this folder and copy all of the files of the source code into this folder. I don't know why they didn't all show up. Let's refresh. Oh, there they are. We don't need this zip file anymore, so I'm going to close this out. Now let's reopen our mingw terminal, and I'm going to put this over here. Now the first thing that we're going to want to do is to navigate to our web server folder. I'm going to click up on this URL bar here and take note of the full URL path to get to this folder. Now in the terminal, we're going to navigate to this folder using the cd command, which is change directory. Now this has a very Linux influence to it, so our file path is going to look a little bit different. So we're going to go to slash c slash users slash cake, which is my username, documents, and then web server. Uh, friendly tip, if you hit tab while you're typing a name, it will auto-complete things for you. And if I hit enter here, it will then show us that we are currently in this folder. And we can double check that by typing in ls, which will list files and folders here. And we should see that all of these line up with everything that we see over here in this folder. Let's make sure that we set everything up properly by just compiling a pre-existing example that comes with Mongoose. If you go back to mongoose.ws in your web browser and then go to the developers dropdown and tutorials, you'll see that there's a bunch of getting started documents.
The very first tutorial listed here is for a basic HTTP server. And if you start reading through this, you'll notice that a lot of this content lines up with what I've already covered in this video. Inside of our web server folder, we can actually see this examples folder. And if we look in here, we see a ton of pre-made examples that we could try out. Right here, we see a project called HTTP server, which is the same name as the very first tutorial on their website. And inside this folder, it looks very simple. So this should be an excellent place to get started. For now, let's just focus on getting this project compiled. In my next video, I'll do a code breakdown of main.c and we'll see what's actually happening. So to compile this, we just need to navigate to this folder in our terminal. We can see up here that I went into examples and then HTTP server. So in our terminal, let's type in CD examples and HTTP server. Let's start by clearing the screen. Now, normally to compile a program, we use GCC and then we would pass in a ton of arguments such as the file that we want to compile like main.c, uh, maybe the output file, we could call this one Mitch and then a bunch of other arguments. Now over here, we see a file called makefile. And if we right click on it and open it with some sort of a text editor, we can view the contents. This might look a little scary at first, but honestly, this is a very well-made makefile. Essentially, the point of a makefile is to take that command that you'd have to execute to compile code, such as this, where we have GCC and then a ton of arguments, and then you put them in here so that way you don't have to memorize them. Because as you can imagine, typing this in over and over again to compile would probably not be very fun. The text editor that I'm using actually highlights all of the rules, and you can see one is called all, one is called mongoose.exe, one is called mingw, one is called linux, there's another linux, and there's also one called clean. So we don't actually have to understand what's going on in this file in order to compile our code. Let's take note of this rule here, which is called mingw in all lowercase. Essentially what we want to do is run this make file with this rule, which will then end up executing this right here. Alternatively, you could just copy and paste this line of code if you want to. So we're going to go to our terminal and type in make, and then the name of the rule that we just saw, which is min gw. And as soon as we press enter, we can see that it's executing the command we were just looking at in notepad. And more importantly, it compiled without any errors. We can now see a new file in here called mongoose.exe, which is our freshly compiled web server. And now to run our freshly compiled web server, all we have to do is double click on mongoose.exe. This is gonna open up a brand new terminal window with some debug information. Now, if you saw a pop-up asking if you wanna allow this program through the firewall, you're gonna to wanna to say yes. In this debug information, I wanna call attention to this line right here that says listening on. Here we can see that we're listening on IP address 0.0.0.0. That means listen on any address to any incoming traffic. Next, we see this colon 8000, which means listen on port 8000. By default, most websites run on port 80, but since this is non-standard, we're gonna to have to explicitly type in colon 8000 at the end of our URL. To view our website, all we have to do is open a web browser, and then in the URL, we type in our computer's IP address. And if you don't know what that is, you can always type in 127.0.0.1, and that's a special IP address that always points back to your own computer. And then since we're using a non-standard port, we explicitly have to type in colon 8000. And if we hit enter, will be greeted with this page. What we're seeing here is just a very basic demo of Mongoose, and it's taking a look at every file that's in this folder here and kind of building up a very simple HTML page and sending it back to our browser. You can test that this is live by coming over to our folder and creating just a dummy project over here, and we'll call this uh, mitch.txt. And if we refresh our page here, we should see that it shows up in this list as well. This demo project is a very simple file server, and we can actually click on any one of these files and see the contents of it. And that's it for this video. We managed to get all of the tools installed that we needed to compile Mongoose and actually host a demo web server. In my next video, we'll actually do a deep dive into the demo code that's provided and see what's making this program tick. This video is actually made in collaboration with the creators of Mongoose, Sasanta. So I'd like to say a special thanks to them for helping with this video. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.